Hello, this is Kevin Amont. I work in the Applications Department at X-Ray, and I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, monitor calibration today. In a color managed workflow, it is critical to begin with a calibrated and profiled display. And before you begin profiling your display, there's uh, a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, the display should be on and warmed up for at least 30 minutes before profiling. Secondly, make sure that the display is clean uh, and you can get a uh, monitor cleaners at any computer store. Uh, third, uh, familiarize yourself with the menu or the on-screen display. Uh, this particular display uh, menu opens up right in the center of the monitor. It would be a good idea to use the on-screen display settings feature of this menu to move the menu out of the middle third of the screen by going into the on-screen display settings and moving it over to the far right. That way when we begin profiling with the instrument in the center of the screen, the on-screen display doesn't get in the way. In this demonstration, we're going to profile our monitor using the advanced method of in I1 Match. You go to Start All Programs, Great Tag Macbeth, and I1 Match 3 to open the software. In a Macintosh computer, you'd go to the Applications folder and there'll be an I1 Match 3. Uh, startup icon. The monitor, you'd want to select the monitor for profiling and go down to the bottom and select the advanced method and go forward. The LCD display is selected. Uh, you can also profile CRTs or laptops go forward from there. In the next window you'll see a choose calibration settings window where you can select the white point. Our recommendation is a 6500. You have the ability to select a number of different options 5000, 7500 or the monitor's native white point if you'd like. Our recommendation is 6500 a gamma of 2.2 for both Macintosh and uh, PC. In the luminance level, for an LCD, it's recommended to 120 candelas per meter squared. A CRT is 100. So uh, I'm going to select the 120. These recommendations are geared towards uh, a monitor to uh, have the white point match the uh, a, a paper white when viewed in a 5,000 Kelvin light booth. Um, that's something that the experts in the industry have determined uh, is uh, the best match. A monitor at 6,500 uh, most closely resembles paper white when viewed in a 5,000 Kelvin light booth. I'm not going to perform the ambient light check here. If I, if I had this checked and left it checked, I would, the next step would be to measure the ambient room lighting. Uh, that will not figure into the profile at all. All it is is just an additional function that allows you to check your room lighting if you'd like. I'm going to go forward from there. And at this point, you need to place your, I'm using an I1 Pro spectrophotometer uh, to profile, so I need to set the instrument in the calibration plaque and either press the black read button on the side to calibrate or the calibrate button on screen. I'm going to use the button on the side of the instrument and when I press that, it now says that the instrument is calibrated and we go forward from there. At this point it asks you to place the instrument on the display and 
What we need to do is take it out of the calibration plan and place it in the monitor holder by using the three locking tabs in the holder and aligning those with the three cutouts on the head of the instrument. Align those, rotate it down into place, and now the instrument's in the holder. You place it on the screen by putting it in the center of the screen and then the weight over the back of the display. It's also a good idea to tip back your screen so that the instrument lays flush against the monitor. Then you go forward by selecting the forward button. In this screen, it says set the contrast to 100%. This is where you have to call up your menu. And the menu, once again, we moved it over to the right side so that it's out of the center. But once again, you hit the minus to get to the contrast setting. I'll select the contrast setting. And I need to turn that up to 100%. This is where you're going to measure the maximum contrast to begin with. And now I select Start. And at this point, the screen is locating the device. Uh, it searches out using a difference in, uh, in, in uh, brightness. It throws a box around, and it locates the instrument. Once it locates the instrument, it's all right to just move this instrument a little bit so that it's right in the center of that box. And at this point, the contrast indicator is indicating that the, the black bar is over to the right. That tells us that we need to turn down the contrast. And once again, I call up the menu. I navigate down to the contrast. I select the contrast. And now I'm going to turn down the contrast. And until that black bar gets right in the center. Okay, and you need to give it a little bit of time to adjust after you're making changes to it. So again, it's reading continuously here, and you'll see my contrast is down to 82%, and if I go up to 83, it's a little bit too high. It's not uncommon for you to not be able to get this right in the center. It's always gonna be a this is the best I can do, and at 82, we're just about right, right in the middle. So at this point, I'm going to select Stop. And the contrast is adjusted. You can close the menu if you'd like. And then at this point, you stop and go forward.